Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for another Breakfast with Blaha, and today I'm having brown rice, steak, and uh, mixed vegetables. All right, let's talk about elite lifters who have a squat bench and a deadlift day every week, train three days a week. Uh, something I've, I've had to think about again, it was interesting is that I know multiple people who train this way. And when I say no, I mean either I know them in person and have had these conversations face to face, or I've had video calls and things with them, right? Chatted with them. And it's something I started thinking about again recently uh, because I got in a conversation with a guy who is currently trying to break all-time Submasters 220 records, right? That's his goal for this coming year. It's what he wants to do. And to put into context how strong this guy is, he's benching 500, he's actually benching over 500, squats over 700 raw at 220. 220. Uh, obviously, this is a very thick stacked guy at 220. He's a little bit below average height. Uh, had a video call with him because he coaches a friend of mine. And he wanted some advice on growing his online coaching business because he works a regular nine to five, which, you know, again, crazy. Guy lifts like that. That's a working class job. Kids. All that stuff. Working class guy doing a little bit of online coaching, a little bit of in-person coaching. It's not his primary business. And he lifts like that. Okay, he lifts like that. Again, benching over 500, squatting over 700 raw. That's his no wraps. It's over 700. He's planning on going in and wraps. Like wants to squat like 850 and wraps. And the 220. Okay, this is, this is crazy. All right, he trains three days a week. Trains three days a week. He has a squat day, bench day, deadlift day. And we're chatting about how he periodizes it. Uh, I knew another guy like that. I told you guys before, a guy I knew in the UK. 400 kg squat. For my American friends and freedom units, that's 880, almost 900 pounds. Now, granted, it's with wraps. The guy's in the 275 class. Had a very thick Polish accent. Chatting with him in a meet because I met him in a couple of different meets. And he had said kind of a similar thing. You know, now here's the joke. He was like, uh, he's like, I train three day a week. I have squat day Monday, bench press day Wednesday, Deadlift day Friday, do linear periodization, drink gallon of milk a day, take Diana Bowl, all good. The guy benched over 500 also. That's how these guys are training. You know, people will say, wait, they've only, yeah, they only have one real upper body day a week. I guess that's all that's necessary. Now, while these guys are course rowing and things on deadlift day so really what it what is this it's a push pull legs bro split but the focus is still on big exercises and when i say the focus there i mean these guys are doing when you start chatting with them and the same thing go look at uh, like some of the the really big super strong russian lifters same sort of thing they're doing five to ten sets like they're doing up to 10 sets of squat in one day, deadlift in one day, bench in one day. A lot of volume. Plus their supplemental work. Like they're doing other stuff on it. And I've thought about using a system like this myself. Thought about it. It's workable. You know, and, and this is the thing we get into. The research is in flux. 
And I know I've always said for years and years, you know, muscle protein synthesis, muscle protein synthesis uptime, we train each muscle twice a week. Some of that is coming into question. Now, granted, um, some of these guys I've chatted with, people are like, well, they're on gear, aren't they? Well, yeah, but they're oftentimes more conservative than you would think. They're, again, using a lot less than bodybuilders. Using a lot less than bodybuilders who do bro splits. You know, yet these guys are getting monstrously strong. And you can argue about hypertrophy all we want, but, you know, bench requires a lot of hypertrophy. And these guys are only training their pre pressing muscles once a week. So, you know, here's the thing we come over to. We know that training volume and practice is where you get the specificity for an exercise. It is nothing to do with frequency. That's muscle protein synthesis. All right, we know that. We know that. And we know there tends to be sometimes upper thresholds of volume per muscle group. But again, that's when gear is not in the equation. Gear goes into the equation could someone do 10 sets of a main exercise and then five sets of supplemental for it? 15 sets once a week can be good. But the thing is, there's always going to be some overlap with these big movements. There's always going to be some overlap. You know, and the difference is these guys aren't coming in and doing just a bunch of single joint exercises. They're doing big stuff usually. But it works. And it's workable, and these guys are not beat up. Okay, that's kind of where I look at it and say, all right, what's going on? The overuse end. That's also a factor. Because if a certain movement pattern being hammered once a week has a week off to recover, we're getting all the practice we need in. All right, the recovery end is great. The recovery end is great. The practice is great. So the only question becomes that muscle growth, right? It's the muscle growth question. And I don't fully have an answer to that. You know, as far as the drug-free guys out there go, I don't have an answer conclusively to say what's going on with the muscle protein synthesis and muscle growth. There's more data coming out, Schoenfeld's data and stuff, showing that mm, the volumes are optimized the frequency may not matter as much as, as we think it has historically for hypertrophy. I want to see more research, right? I want to see more data there before I jump up and say that. But I know for a fact, guys on gear are hitting super elite numbers training this way. I've met multiple of them. Right, I've met others outside of these guys, but these are guys who I've had some, you know, interesting conversations with about it. So it's clearly working. They're clearly not limited. Again, these are world-class level guys who are big and strong. They're not doing like I'm talking about doing and being 90 kilos master's records. Right, these, are, <laughs> these are guys who are seriously strong in open classes. Uh, open submasters, things like that, with ultra elite numbers. And again, we come back over that hypertrophy end. It's like guys are benching 500 plus pounds with thick upper bodies, only training pressing muscles once a week. So we know it's working for them. The only question I guess it, I really have with that is is it workable for the drug free guys? I don't know. I want to see more of the data before I make a statement on that. Again, and it might take a few years more research before we have answers there, but I've been trying to follow it closely, and I'll dig further into it and kind of see what's come out in the last six months. I'm actually curious. And if all this time a lot of us who are evidence-based guys, that we might be wrong for non-novice lifters. When you get out of that novice phase, we might actually be wrong on the frequency thing, which is going to be kind of a big snafu. A lot of us are going to have to eat humble pie if that happens. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.